John chapter 4, verse number 1. I'm reading from the NIV. Now Jesus learned the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar with a plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well and it was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? The Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst Indeed, the water I gave them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And this woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you said you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man that you have now is not your husband. What would you, what you have said is quite true, sir. The woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where he must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is of the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and now has come. The true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they uh, are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. I read all that to get here. Just then, the disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman, but no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water pot, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way to scripture lesson for today is one of the most familiar in all of the Bible. It is the account of the meeting between Jesus and a woman that takes place at a well. As you well know, this seemingly random noonday encounter with Jesus radically changes this woman's life. So much so that the end result is threefold. This random meeting with Jesus at the well causes an exposure of misconceptions, racial biases, and denominational divisions in the name of God as social constructs that shaped this woman's theology. So that when she met Jesus and had the conversation with Jesus, what we found out was what that she had heard about God based upon certain theological perspectives was not true and understood that there this thing called denominationalism or things trying to get God to represent certain viewpoints was nothing more than a social construct that was created by man. The second thing that happens in this chance meeting with Jesus is that this woman gets a revelation of the true of the nature of true worship. What she found out was that true worship is about the purity and sincerity of heart in seeking God versus perfecting rigid religious protocols at designated times in designated places. 
hear me again. After she had this talk with God, after she had this talk with Jesus, not only did she learn uh, that Jesus or God himself does not really have the social biases of the church, but she also found out that the true nature of worship is about the condition and the sincerity of your heart. And it is not about where you worship him, when you worship him, or how you move in worship. But number three, this woman found out through her conversation with Jesus, she found out that a, a sincere and passionate desire for intimacy with the creator ultimately brings you face to face with God's manifest presence and it brings you face to face with the fact that God accepts you just the way you are. That's what she found out. She had this conversation with Jesus about race and about religion and about worship. She found out, watch this, that when you sincerely desire God, sincerely desire to get close to him, when you sincerely desire to get to know him, you are rewarded, watch this, with God's manifested presence. And you will find out that all of the things that you thought that disqualified you or that you were taught that disqualified you from being in relationship with God don't have the power to make God refuse you. Let me fix this for a minute. Remember what happens in the text. Jesus says to her, he says to her, listen, uh, please understand, it ain't about Jews or Samaritans. It ain't about where or how we worship. As long as our heart is right, as long as we sincerely, uh, sincerely pursue and desire him, he will give us what we want. But watch this. The woman says, we know that when Messiah comes, we shall see him or we shall know him and he says what you're looking for you're looking at you are already encountering God face to face uh, I'm preaching just as you are <laughs> with all of your idiosyncrasies just as you are with all of your flaws and your failures and the like just as as you are, you are standing face to face, eye to eye with the God of all creation. Ah, so impactful was this woman's experience with Jesus that she returns to the village in which she lived, shared the good news of her personal experience with him, and convinced the people in her community to come see a man that brought her face to face with the realities of her life and thusly freed her from her painful past and freed her to live in the present hopeful reality of a promised future. That what makes this story even more impactful, what makes it even more integral, what makes it even more relative to our spiritual growth is that it all began in a narrative of avoidance due to fear.